Welcome to another Deep Dive. Today we're exploring an archaeological puzzle that's uh, really grabbed a lot of attention recently, and it might just challenge what you thought you knew about ancient history. Definitely. We're talking about a series of ancient spherical artifacts that have been unearthed in Mexico and Colombia, and they're adorned with these incredibly intricate, um, almost chip-like symbols. The resemblance to modern microcircuitry is... Well, it's pretty striking. Yeah, it really is. And our mission for this deep dive, basically, is to navigate through all the available info. So we're looking at archaeological reports, scientific discussions, and yeah, even those uh, those social media posts that have gone viral. We'll explore the claims, the controversies, and frankly, the kind of profound implications of these, uh, these out-of-place objects. Right. So for you, the listener, here's the core thing to grapple with. Imagine finding an object right? It looks like a piece of modern tech, like cutting edge stuff. But then the carbon dating suggests it's thousands and thousands of years old. Exactly. How could objects that look like microchips possibly exist between, say, 6,000 and 9,000 BC? That's, well, that's the question. Let's dig into it. Okay. So when we talk about these artifacts, what do they actually look like? Picture this. They're generally spherical, made from stone, sometimes metal, surfaces look weathered, uh, mm -hmm. you know, ancient. As you'd expect. But they're etched with these incredibly precise geometric patterns. And often right in the center, there's this design. Yeah. It just creams microchips. It's eerie. You've nailed the description and the locations. The yeah. Mexican ones are typically found in places like Tula and Ojuelos, and they've been sort of popping up over decades, maybe since the 90s, maybe earlier. Often it's local people who find them first. Interesting. And then there's the Buga Sphere. That one surfaced more recently in Colombia, discovered uh, March 2nd, 2025. And that Buga Sphere seems to be the one that really, you know, kicked off this recent wave of attention. Social media, especially X, what used to be Twitter, just blew up. Oh, absolutely. We saw posts like that one from Ad Ancesp around June 22nd, yeah. describing these things as part of a mind-blowing, consciousness-expanding time, big claims. It's amazing how fast these things spread now, isn't it? And the sharing of like excavation footage, there was that X post from June 23rd. It definitely helps make the claims feel more real, more immediate. It brings more people into the conversation, which is great. Yeah, democratizes it a bit. Exactly. But it also, you know, invites scrutiny, especially because some of those earlier Mexican finds, well, the documentation isn't always super precise. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. So, OK, they look like tech. Where does the dating come in? OK, yeah, the age. This is where it gets really fascinating and uh, potentially controversial. It comes down to carbon dating, specifically organic residues found with some of the Mexican artifacts, things like maybe glue or resin, something used in their placement or creation. And these tests have given tentative age estimates, placing them somewhere between 6,000 and 9,000 BC. Wow. OK, 6,000 and 9,000 BC. That time frame is... Well, it's a jaw dropper. It absolutely is. Because that puts these things thousands of years before the Sumerians, before the Egyptians, you know, the civilizations we think of as the start of complexity around 3000 BC. It suggests a level of technological sophistication that just doesn't fit the standard picture of like prehistoric cultures. Precisely. But, and this is a big but, we have to talk about the reliability of those dates. How dependable are they really? Especially if there aren't sort of universally agreed upon standards for verifying finds like this. Ah, okay. So there are potential issues with the dating itself. Well, yes. Radiocarbon dating is a powerful tool, no doubt. But it has challenges. Thomas Hyam pointed this out back in 2014, the issue of young carbon contamination. Young carbon, what's that? It's basically when newer organic material gets mixed in with the ancient sample. It can happen easily if an artifact's been handled a lot over the years or wasn't stored perfectly. And this newer carbon makes the sample seem younger than it really is, or potentially vice versa if there are other contaminants. But young carbon is a common concern. So if contamination is a real risk, how much confidence can we place in those really ancient dates? Mm -hmm. Are we talking about a potential misinterpretation? It's less about the method being flawed and more about needing extreme care and, crucially, multiple lines of evidence. You need controlled conditions, ideally confirmation from other dating methods if possible, and standardized verification. Without all that, these extraordinary dates remain, well, tentative. Highly intriguing, but tentative. Got it. So the, the implication is huge if the dates hold up. Mm -hmm. A total rewrite of early human capability. A fundamental rewrite, yeah. Okay, let's zoom in on the symbols themselves, these chip-like patterns. You mentioned grids, concentric lines, intersecting shapes, 
Mm -hmm. These sound very deliberate, not just random scratching. Oh, absolutely deliberate. That's the consensus even among mainstream researchers. In the comparison to modern microchips, it's not just a casual thing. Not at all. You put pictures side by side. The resemblance, particularly to older integrated circuits or certain kinds of circuit boards, is, well, it's startling. Has we seen anything remotely like this before in archaeology? Other weirdly advanced looking thing. We have actually, and that's important context. Think about the Antikythera mechanism. Oh yeah, the ancient Greek computer. Exactly. Found in a shipwreck, dated to maybe the second century BC. For decades, people didn't fully get what it was. It looked like complex clockwork. Now we know it was an incredibly sophisticated analog computer for tracking astronomical cycles. Its rediscovery and reinterpretation completely changed our view of ancient Greek technology. So the Antikythera mechanism shows that sometimes ancient tech was way more advanced than we initially assumed. Precisely. It sets a precedent for reevaluating what was possible. Which, of course, fuels all sorts of speculation about these spheres. Are they actual remnants of some lost, advanced, prehistoric tech? Or could they be something else? Natural formations that just happen to look like chips? Or... An elaborate fakes? Hoaxes? And that's where you see the split. Mainstream archaeology, represented by institutions like Mexico's INAH, the National Institute of Anthropology and History. They've looked at similar objects, confirmed they were human modified, but they absolutely stopped short of saying ancient aliens or lost super civilization. Right. They stick to the known evidence. Whereas researchers on the fringe, people like uh, ufologist Hemi Mossan, they look at these anomalies and see potential proof, proof of highly advanced prehistoric civilizations or even paleo contact. That's the idea that extraterrestrials visited or influenced early humans. So it's like two different ways of looking at the same puzzle piece. One side tries to fit it into the existing picture. The other says maybe the picture itself is wrong. That's a good way to put it. Mainstream science demands extraordinary evidence for extraordinary claims and needs it to fit within or convincingly revise the established framework. Fringe theories often start with the anomaly, the piece that doesn't fit, and build outwards from there, sometimes proposing entirely new frameworks. Okay, let's pivot to the Bugis sphere specifically. That Colombian find from 2025, that one seems to have some extra layers of weirdness. It certainly does, based on the reports. The researcher involved, Jose Luis Velasquez, documented some really unusual properties. The most startling one is this claim of weight shifts. He reported handling it, and its weight apparently changed fluctuating from about 2 kilograms up to over 10 kilograms. Wait, what? It just got heavier while someone was holding it. That's the claim. And along with that, Velasquez reported no visible welds or joints. It appeared seamless, which, for metalwork of that supposed age, would be incredibly difficult, defying typical ancient metallurgy. Okay, the seamless part sounds like advanced casting, maybe. But the weight shift, that sounds like something else entirely that's bizarre. It is bizarre, and it's exactly these kinds of anomalies that someone like Hemi Masson points to as strong evidence for non-human or highly advanced ancient tech. He draws parallels to other O-parts out-of-place artifacts. But what does mainstream science say about, like, sphere changing weight is there any conventional explanation well skepticism is high as you'd expect physicists and archaeologists say from institutions like unem in mexico urge extreme caution they suggest weight anomalies could potentially result from things like subtle environmental factors affecting the scale or even simple measurement errors especially under field conditions okay so mundane explanations need to be ruled out first absolutely and regarding the seamlessness, they might propose advanced casting techniques, perhaps lost to time, rather than jumping to extraterrestrial engineering. Julia Mossbridge, a physicist who often looks into anomalous phenomena, consistently emphasizes the need for rigorous, repeatable, independent testing before making huge leaps in explanation. And the social media factor complicates this too, right? Things go viral so fast. Immensely. You get unverified videos, excited posts like the ones from users such as at Razanay3067. They spread like wildfire, often way faster than careful scientific analysis can happen. Plus, you have the whole hoax concern. Are people faking these? It's a valid concern. There have been reports, or at least rumors, of similar-looking items appearing on places like eBay. And online forums like Reddit have discussions about how much work it would actually take to create one of these and artificially age it to look ancient. It's not trivial, but potentially doable. So how do you even filter the signal from the noise when something blows up online like this? It feels almost impossible. It's incredibly difficult. That's why the careful, methodical work of established institutions doing their own peer-reviewed studies is so vital. 
public enthusiasm is great. It drives interest, but it has to be coupled with, you know, proper scientific investigation to get reliable answers. Otherwise, you just get lost in speculation. Okay, stepping back a bit, let's assume for a moment these things are genuine and are accurately dated to that incredibly early period. What's really fascinating is how they just shatter that neat linear story of technological progress we usually tell. Yeah, the idea that we went from stone tools to agriculture to cities to metallurgy in a nice steady progression. Exactly. These spheres, if real, suggest maybe things were much more complex. Maybe there were peaks and valleys of technological sophistication we don't know about. It raises a huge question. What were prehistoric people really capable of? And it definitely makes you look again at other anomalies, like Gobekli Tepe in Turkey. Perfect example. That site, with its massive, sophisticated stone structures dated to around 9000 BC, already forced archaeologists to rethink the timeline of complex societies and organized religion. It showed things were happening much earlier than we thought. So these spheres could be another piece of that puzzle, suggesting even more complexity, potentially technological complexity, much earlier on. Potentially. And of course, this is exactly the kind of evidence that fuels the paleocontact hypothesis advocates. For them, it fits a pattern of anomalous findings that hint at an external influence. Meanwhile, you have institutions like INA and UNAM being very cautious, demanding more proof, sticking to the evidence-based approach. Right. It highlights that tension between sticking to established frameworks versus embracing potentially paradigm-shifting anomalies. And philosophically, wow, it touches on huge questions about human ingenuity, maybe even the nature of consciousness across time, and our place in the grand scheme of things. Are we the first technological species on this planet? We're just the latest. Big questions. So, turning back to you, the listener, thinking about all this, how might it shift your view of our deep past? What does it make you wonder? So to wrap up this deep dive, we've journeyed into this really perplexing mystery of these ancient spherical artifacts from Mexico, from Colombia, especially that Buga sphere. We've looked at the chip-like symbols, the potentially staggering ancient dates, and those reported weird properties. And we're definitely left with more questions than answers, aren't we? Big questions about their authenticity, their actual origin, what they were even for. It just underscores the absolute need for more research. Rigorous interdisciplinary work. That means controlled digs careful documentation, hmm. and using advanced techniques like, say, X-ray fluorescence, XRF analysis, that can tell you the exact elemental makeup of the object without damaging it. Get some hard data on the materials. Right, move beyond just looking at them and speculating. Get some solid science involved. Exactly. Only then can we maybe start to piece together what these things really are. And just to leave you with a final thought, circling back to that social media post that caught our eye, we are living in mind-blowing, consciousness-expanding times. It makes you wonder what other established knowns about our history might be challenged next. After hearing all this, what's maybe one thing you might reconsider about the story of humanity? Keep digging. Keep asking questions. Thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive.